Turn me to Hebrews 11. Glory to God. You know, I, amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Hebrews 11. Glory to God. We praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah to your name. Just wave your hand unto the Lord. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. Thank you, Majesty. Just wave your hand unto the Lord. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. Thank you, mighty God. Hebrews 11. You know, we've been reading. We've been since 12 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Those of you who have been following, how many of you know that Wednesday is part of the thing? Some of us that are even members, everyone says something at the end of the, you know, we know some things I can say to just see how many members, praise God. Yes, I'm saying it's true, bless you. <laughs> Glory to God. I really appreciate all of you that are very committed. I don't know if you know that the song they sang, we oh bless your name, is something people prepared, isn't it? That's what they're working on. There are many songs they're working on, in-house songs. <coughs> Praise God. And so very soon we have a, a library full of songs that are just here. Glory to God. But they come here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all through the week, and they're working on it and all that. So, so we thank God for that. Praise God. The gifts and the callings of God, they are not without repentance. And it only goes on the increase as you submit it to him. Everybody say, submit to him. You know, giving is not just your money. Money, your talent, your time, your mind. He said, let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth, what? Glorify him. Yeah, your life, bless him, glorify him. So all of us, praise God. Don't you ever say you're involved? Amen. <clears throat> now, so we see that the hall of faith talks of the experiences of people. Notice a lot of people in the Old Testament talked about faith. <laughs> when, the faith when the dispensation of faith came in the new. So they tapped into righteousness before it came. Huh. Is somebody seeing that? How, why would Noah be, why would Enoch be seen? He just became like God. Every day glory. Every day glory. Before you know it, he became invisible because we can't see him. Because we can't see God, basically. You get that? Say, I want to know you, Lord. You know, we say that. Oh, I want to know you more. <laughs> Your heart wants to know God more. Walk by faith. <laughs> you know, praise God. Which is no matter what you see, stay on. So, in this time, you know, we've been talking about this Hebrews 11. A lot has been going around. We see that. There are so many things in the system, many things happening to individuals. It's not new, you know. You know, some years back, sometimes the activity of wickedness just increases. People think, oh my God, what's happening? It's like the devil has taken over the world. He's always been here. <laughs> he blows, woo, please, nothing. The activity of the Holy Spirit is far more. No matter how much he tries to squeeze it, it's always there. The wave comes, the wave comes. Relax, God is working. Like he told Elijah, please, you just see some remnants. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> He's still walking. So the intention of the enemy is to make us feel like God is not walking. The things happening around us is too strong. It's too hard. It's too bad. So how can we do it? Look, if you look in the system, it makes it look like the devil is winning. You know, it makes it more difficult for you to believe God for your individual thing. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. 
He wants you to feel isolated. He said, there's no temptation but such as is common. Come on. It's not just you. Because when he gets you to think it's just you, then you begin to wonder, does God still love me? Hello? I mean, of course, I've asked that question recently. Is God still aware? <laughs> or am I just by myself? It feels like that sometimes. Because we want to tap, tie God into the natural things happening. It might sound so, it might look so silent, so quiet. Nothing is happening. God is working. He's working. He's working. Tell somebody God is working. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. He's working on our behalf. He loves us. We're inscribed in the palm of his hand. He said he cares for us. Cast your body on him for what? For he careth for you. Now, he said, he could have just said, cast your body and don't say for he careth. He said the reason you cast is because you know he cares. So things are trying to make you feel he doesn't care, so you don't cast yourself. How can I come to you and say, help me when I know you don't care about me? <laughs> yeah. You won't care. You won't help. Love is a very practical thing. You can't be for me and be against me at the same time. <laughs> it will be obvious what you are. You can't be against what I stand for and you say you are for me. It's impossible. Can you imagine somebody who runs a restaurant and he finds a customer who comes in? I don't like this place. This food is messed up. And the next month, the person applies for a job in the place, and he gives him a job. The, the owner must be very smart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. Now, the resume might be serious. But he can never, no matter what he portrays, deep down inside, he's going to be walking against the vision. Praise God. So today, I'm talking to everything in the Hall of Faith, from the beginning, Ephesians 11, centers around decisions. See, on Wednesday, we're talking about the response of faith. That's how they obey. We're going to continue that. But this is like around this, but I'm talking about trying to let you see the, why you should hunger to walk according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we're talking about the leading, how to know. But I'm talking, not to bring it up. People are not, people are just flip through social media and look at what somebody said. Does it click with what my emotions feel? Okay, that must be God. <laughs> or, or wait for somebody else. Go. That's why people run around all over the place. Because everything about walking as a Christian is by leading. The Christian is anchored on depending on God. He cannot do anything by himself. That's why we're Christian. So there are decisions shape lives. School to go to, career to choose, job to go to, to, to do, who to marry, location, friends to choose, the choice of friends. You know you can make and not make people even a high school student that goes, excuse me, that goes into college, the choice of friends can make or make them. Decision about business. Who you listen to, even the Bible says, blessed is he that walk not on the counsel of the ungodly. Now study in the world, so not sit there in the of his comfort. It does not matter who the person is. <laughs> if they are contrary to scripture, they can be your closest relative or the best of friends. People have made, things have happened like that. There are decisions. We make Decisions come from what, how God leads us as Christians. People have made decisions based on other people's opinion. Somebody wants to get married, is a Christian, or she's a Christian, and goes to a relative who doesn't know squeal about the Bible. <laughs> he doesn't know what the Lord said, the Lord's opinion, and now looks at the person. Like, who comes? Are oh, you of age, yo? Oh, by now, you should get married. <laughs> That's his first mind. This will do us good. Then the next thing is, who is the guy? Or who is she? 
Oh, she's beautiful. He's cool. He has money. Oh, that's good. You see, all the external things. He doesn't know anything about his spirit. So he chooses based on that. So he, you run to that one and ask decision. Can you imagine? I tell you, hey, go ahead, man. This is great. And you to your mind like, hey, yeah, yeah, I thought of it. For you to even be running around, it's obvious the Lord is might be cautioning you already. Are you hearing me? That's why you're running around to find out whether it is. So there's nothing wrong in wanting to confirm. See, that's how we find the reason why some people go about they look for who to tell them something. Things that are happening or coming. But we should know for ourselves. People have walked up to me a number of times. Sometimes out of, I use wisdom to tamper. What's the Lord saying? Tell me what the Lord is saying. A lot. Oh my God, I look at it like, come on. <laughs> We're not just there. Actually, it's not, it's not, the, the word the Lord is saying is not just like, it's like as if, as if it's uh, something like an activity. I don't know how they put it. It's a lifestyle. For as many as are led, Romans 8, 14 says, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you a child of God? You're supposed to be led. So it's not something like once in a while, what's the Lord saying? Okay, yeah, I said it. Bam, bam, bam. Amen. We go on, uh, we continue. Anyhow, we want to leave. Then come back to what's the Lord saying? Sometimes people are looking for words to confirm their the rubbish. <laughs> what you know is wrong. You know, you're looking for some isolated scripture or word that is not probably explained to say, yeah, it must be good. If you are, if for example, somebody knows he's living in error or making wrong decisions, and somebody comes and says, the Lord loves you so much. Might, of course God loves you. <laughs> the Lord is doing great things in your life. God is doing great things continuously. And stops there and doesn't say, and continues. The person now says, I told them. God understands. <laughs> Are you getting it? So, isolated prophecy. Because there are general prophecies speaking to one another in spiritual songs and hymns. Are you hearing it? We are supposed to speak one and encourage one another. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a general prophecy. But there are specifics in issues. So, somebody who is speaking, that's why you're careful. I'm always careful of that. But, well, there are, there are giftings and there are gifts. You understand? There are, some are prophecies for every believer. But the office of the prophet comes with definite gifts of the spirit. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit, and prophecy. Now, so somebody can have the gift of prophecy does not make him or her a prophet. Are you getting it? So, so uh, somebody can, be, can have an evangelistic anointing that has some of the other gifts but might not be prophetic. So, so some of these things can be misunderstood. So if you're, sometimes you find prophetic, a prophetic teacher can come. Teach. Pro- prophetic. Teach. Every word in his teaching, the ministration is prophetic. And he explains his things. But somebody can just come and bam, 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 so they go. And they misunderstand it. Praise God. Some people use it wrongly, you know, to confirm certain things that shouldn't be. So we are, we're able to discern, oh, but we are children of God. We were created to know things. Adam and Eve wanted to know more from the way serpent. The serpent said, I will, you will know more than that. We're, we're created to know things already. God told you, you name the animal. Hmm? He said, Every living creature was brought to Adam by God. <laughs> Adam, hey, hey, name it. Adam named all of them. The scripture says. So we were made to know all things because we are created in the image of the all-knowing omniscience God. Why shouldn't we know? When we fell, Jesus came. He says, for all our sin and falling short of the glory of God, Jesus came to bring us back into that glory. So now the knowledge comes from glory to glory. We go from stage to stage because of the fall. But that does not mean we don't know. As we hunger, blessed be those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. As we hunger, we know. As we hunger, we know. That's what we are. And so this is important for every believer to hunger to be led. Because without knowledge, because we're supposed to know, the leading comes from knowledge. He will show us things. You shall know the truth. The truth you know will set you free. That's the freedom. That's deliverance. Hosea 4, he says, my people perish. They are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. Destroyed. So life comes with knowledge. 
which is leading. How do you survive? How do you leave them if he's not leading you? How do you know what to do as a Christian? On a daily basis, you see, as you grow, it becomes part of your system. But you hunger, no, don't leave it like, oh, I don't know. If there is confusion, don't continue to say, I don't know. Begin to seek him. Now, this seek is not, you don't have to, like, pray and fast for 10 days. Just go to him with every little thought, whatever is your concern. Because he, Philippians 4, he says, be careful for what? For nothing. So the very little thing that's your concern. I just want to say, oh, I miss so, so people. Oh, yeah, Lord, thank you. Help me with grace to be able to handle it. And thank you for your bringing and reconnecting us back. Somebody hear me? <laughs> See, you have given him. <laughs> so you know he's working. See, it happened. So, so, so if, if whatever it is, if you believe God for a job, Lord, I know your word says you supply all my needs, including this job. Don't wait until it piles up. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? No, give him every single one of them. He's not tired. You're not overburdening God. It's not, it's not too much for him to handle. But don't wait until you group it. Don't wait until any special time. Every little moment, give it to him. Even if you get upset or things kind of make you uncomfortable, come back. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me with so and so and so. So when you give him those little, little things, in every one of them, there's peace. So there's no reason for you to be anxious. When you're not, the response to the other issues will be accordingly. I'm not talking about, see, that's, that's why there's nothing. There's no issue that I will handle with because of natural strength. Are you getting it? Even being a pastor, I'm not going to say, well, I'm a pastor. That should do this to me. That's a, you know, no, 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 no. I take every little issue to God. I can be talking with you here. I walk into the office and I'm communicating with the Holy Spirit. So that when I come out, even if it's not that time, my next response, because if I don't deal with it, even when it's a little issue, my reaction to another thing that will come up from you or through you could be bigger than what it's supposed to be because I have not combined the past, which has grown by now. Because <laughs> it's not dealt with. Because you see, it's growing. And then combined with the current, then whoop! Then you will like, what's going on? The devil can use that to me to tell you, I think pastor doesn't like me. You see that? You hear what I'm Because the response will be bigger than what happened. Somebody catch what I'm saying? Praise God. So, 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 so in every little thing, be careful for nothing. That's why I said, so peace comes. So, but now, in this place of peace, there will be no confusion. That does not mean these things don't come, but you challenge them constantly. It's a constant battle. So there's no moment we say, well, okay, yeah, we have arrived, things are finished. No, after one, another one comes. We're living, <laughs> they just shall what? Live by faith. So there must be a place of depending on the Lord. Some say, I don't have time for this hassle. Oh, this is so much. I'm an usher. I don't want time for this usher. This is this, this, uh, com- commitment of my job. <laughs> if you don't do this as an usher, you do it on your job. <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Somewhere, somehow. Praise God. Glory to God. Now, so we see that. So Adam named everything. That's right. Now, notice knowledge. Has to be there for us. You see, I have to say, the earth shall be filled, full of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2.14. Isaiah, in 11.9, he said that, notice in that place, that's particular, you can open unto Isaiah 11.9. He said, now there shall be no hurt or destroying. Let, let me open. Why? Trying to see the difference. Because we said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If God is leading, there is no destruction. <laughs> Somebody hear me? Your steps are ordered by the Lord. You will be steps ahead of the enemy. The snare is broken and our lives are escaped as best out of the snare of the fowler. Say, I'm escaped. It cannot touch me. Isaiah 11, I say, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For, which means because, the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. 
But in this place, say, they shall not hurt or destroy anymore. Why? Because knowledge now shall be plenty. That's why the enemy tries to block knowledge with issues and anxiety. Careless not that that will perish. They didn't know that God cares, storm or no storm. But they didn't know that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Are you getting me now? So there can be anxiety. <laughs> so there's perishing. Because they didn't know. Ignorance is not an excuse. We want to know how. Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 16. As I said, he said he was going to send his spirit. The spirit was supposed to bring continual fellowship with him. Because I will send my spirit. Because I have to live here. So he sent his spirit. So we know what the Holy Spirit hears is what he says. In John 16, 13. He said what he hears from me. That he will bring to you. He will show to you. So he's hearing from Jesus. So which means it's like Jesus being there with us. If Jesus was walking on this earth. He's coming across Vampels. Hello. Some of you just sit there in the house eating your, your rice. <laughs> Please. You are born and everything and run after, isn't it? So the same way he sent his spirit. He might not be here walking physically. But the representative of the most high God. His name is the Holy Spirit. Now I said this spirit leads us. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We are not just... On Wednesday, I'm going to continue that sonship in, that, in this issue I'm talking about. I'm talking about response now on Wednesday's teaching. The obeying and all that. So, uh, walking, uh, listening and doing as it is. Who will who, see? Who see? Glory to God. Is somebody catching something already? So, all to say, he will show all things. What, whatever you are going through now. When I say all things, think of what you are going through now. Is included in the all things. All things have been given to Jesus. The solution to your problem is in him. And he said the Holy Spirit will remind us of what he taught. We teach us new things. And we show us things to come. The way out of that situation. Somebody hear me? There's a way out. I said there's a way out. I said there's a way out. I said there's a way out. If your child tells you, it's so hard in school. I don't know what's going on. There's a way out. If you don't know, how can you tell the child there's a way out? Nothing is impossible. Oh, man. Everybody say nothing. nothing. That excludes nothing and includes everything. Everybody say, okay, say nothing. nothing. You've been my life, you say nothing. Nothing is impossible. What's on your mind right now? That's exactly. When I say that nothing, include that thing now because the word, say, word, the word is coming for is trashing every installation of wickedness now. Nothing, 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 nothing. I said nothing is impossible. No, no, no. See, see, see what you're talking Nothing is impossible. I said nothing is impossible. I remember I, <laughs> if you just, um, some things I just came my, let me just, I can't push Katie alone. Let me just come my speech. I'm not keep push Katie. Can I go ahead and talk? I've not even started my message. <laughs> oh Lord help me a young lady walks into the office some years back I said I misplaced my green card I don't know what to do I said call them I don't know they said this time because of all the things that happened in the 9-11 they don't, they're not responding to all these things quickly anymore, anymore whatever I said okay let's pray I'll share some of these testimonies here before I finish because the Lord is bringing I don't know why it's bringing in that direction of immigration I said okay, let's pray I said, okay, wait. Call them in my presence. She called them. So I picked up the phone. I actually made a call. So when I called, I said, I spoke. They said, no, she, you have to be, she has to give you power for attorney. I said, she's there. Then she picked up the phone. It's me. They asked her identity. And she said, yeah, I'm giving power for attorney to speak on my behalf. So I said, when did you come? She said, well, it's so hard now. Things now. We can't bring it now. It's going to take a whole lot of time. This on this. Anything less than six months, we are not even sure. I said, okay, thank you very much. Why would I fight him? I dropped the phone. And I looked at her. I said, do you believe God? 
She said they said six months plus. I said, really? That's what they said. Now I'm telling you, it's going to come in a matter of weeks. Let us pray. So that's it. And we left. Within three weeks, to God be the glory. <laughs> a young man was saying, you heard his own testimony at the altar sometimes. Don't worry. When he has said his impulse is not going to come, I was on the shower. I said, Lord, did the Lord say, I, you know, you negotiate with me, like Abraham negotiated with the Lord. <laughs> I said, God, God said, this guy, you know, I, but I let me not go into all those things. But I said, I said, Lord, do it. <laughs> Came on. Within the next week, his green car was in the mail. So when he was rolling on the floor in his eyes, I said, someone was what are you doing? He said, you don't understand. <laughs> he was rolling on the floor. A young lady comes and he said, my husband filed for me, and we're having issues. Listen. I said, okay, God can resolve the issue. But in the meantime, he said, I have my interview tomorrow. He said, he's not going with me. I said, well, God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory, not according to your husband. Mm -hmm. So let's believe. He said, the unusual, and that's what I tell you about. Miracle means something that man cannot do. Amen. That's unprecedented favor. Sometimes we look at what we can do. When it gets to the point that you can't do, we don't think it's over. At, in that case, there's no way they will listen to her. Yeah, because the guy is not there. So I said, go. So she went. Came back with the testimony. He said, the man who was interviewing me became my own counselor. You pick up this one. Oh, you don't need it. Let's not put this. Let, yeah, working for her. <laughs> Whoa! Is somebody hearing me? That's where God comes on the scene. He has to show himself strong, strong. Everybody says strong. strong. On our behalf. He's not weak. He's not looking for small issues. He's not looking for weak issues. He's not looking for things that man can handle. No, 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 no. He brings the biggest. Bring the most mountainous. Bring the gigantic. God says, I am more than able. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So a believer should not go to someone else first. You can, but not the first move to find out about things that relate to you. Now, there's counsel that's different. That's not, but to say, um, uh, excuse me, I want to get married. Who do you think I should get married to? <laughs> oh, you see, I, 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 I really want to go to school. What, what course do you think I should do? It shouldn't be. You should receive it first. The believer should know. You know, the first thing is to go to the Lord yourself. Because in the time of crisis, it's what you receive for you that makes you stand. See, that's what stands. All the other time, people say, can come way up, in and out and all that. But you, what you know, keeps you going. You are a child of God. You have access to God. Everyone has access to God. The middle of partition I mentioned once they have been broken down. Other people can confirm what you're already receiving or you're not sure of. They will confirm or tell you in case you are not listening. Sometimes people are not listening. God is speaking. So God can bring somebody here to say, hey, you know, and all that. But not you are the one running to the people. The people will tell you. Or maybe you are not listening or you are not yielding. But primarily, every believer can hear from the Lord for yourself. He does not want to keep us in the dark. Somebody getting me? Glory to God. In Romans chapter 8, and, and we feel in Galatians chapter, 15, chapter 5, we might not be able to open unto them for time's sake. Victory from the flesh will only come by being led. That's the victory we have. If you check in Romans, it talks about uh, the carnal mind leads to what? Death, isn't it? You know the verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation. We sing it and say hallelujah. But notice it bottles down by the Spirit. Living and walking in the Spirit. The Galatians chapter 5 says the same thing to verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, look at it. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians is in the New Testament. <laughs> guess we're not sure praise God <laughs> you know some of, them, some of them might have transferred it to the Old Testament <laughs> praise God uh, amen 
Glory to God. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you check the preceding verses, it talks about us not consuming. If we bite and devour one another. In verse 15, take heed that you be not consume one of another. Devour one another. That's why it talks about love your neighbor as yourself in verse 14. Love, uh, devour one another in strife and bitterness and hatred and conflict and contention. That's what the enemy wants. Where there is no love, there is no power. If there's no, for example, in a congregation, there's no love. You can be praying, sowing, inviting, we're doing everything. When there's no love, it erodes the anointing. Because the spirit of unity, in check in the early church, is the basis for the increase. We share that, we've been sharing that all this while. Breaking bread from house to house. Favor with the, with the Lord and with, with other people. How many of you like it? I mean, I know there are people who do external demonstration. That's not what I'm talking about. How many of you like it when we go inside my fire, but the outside, you know, like the Joneses. That's why you don't look at the Joneses. <laughs> How many of you somehow, when you see people outside, you see that they're sincerely, they love each other. Either couples or maybe friends, the way they are relating to another. You know, you admire them from afar. The same way unbelievers see the love of Christ in Christian because it's genuine. They're like, wow, can this be real? Because some people don't think love is real. That's why when you express love to some people, they're like, oh, wait. <laughs> I remember this man of God say, he didn't believe in hugging. When he became a Christian, he wanted to hug him. Say, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> hey, don't come too near. <laughs> yeah, he said it. Jesse the plant is. Yeah, somebody you all know. He said, he said, no, no, no. He didn't believe in hugging. He didn't understand why people hug him. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's the love of God. Praise God. <laughs> no, he said, so people outside, we admire that. So the same thing. So where there's love, and where there's no love, no matter how phony it looks, or you want to patch it or pretend it to be, it is very, it can be perceived so strongly. Now sometimes people make the mistake think you are the only one who perceives. Others perceive too. That's why I can't be hypocritical. I can't be around you, I know, I don't care, I know. And it's not like I avoid you if I don't care. That's not the solution still. But ask God for grace to care. Somebody here now? So it's not like so the boys will say, well, God knows I don't care for them. You avoid them since I shouldn't pretend. No. If you don't ask for grace. <laughs> so you can be able to love all men. That's what the people, scripture says. Love thy neighbor. This is some neighbor. Thy neighbor as of everyone. You say, as much as it's light on you, live peaceably yeah. with all men. Yeah. Everybody say amen. amen. So when you cannot, then you ask God for his grace like in every other thing. One, sometimes where we think we can get a physical pay or, or response or advantage, then we walk around it. On your job, you will do right. Somehow it doesn't matter. Maybe in the church or anywhere else. <laughs> you don't care. You know what I'm trying to say? Because yeah. no, the Lord is not there physically right there. but He's actually there both on your job and in the church and everywhere. You know, we, we like to be down to earth and practical here. Every day, on a daily basis, you know. Now, somebody says, but is this possible? We heard the story. That's not our portion in Jesus' name. Some years back, right on Staten Island here, the neighbor who came out. Remember the thing, George Diggins, no? That shot his neighbor dead? Yeah. So, one family lost the person that was shot dead. He was sent to 25 years jail. Two families lost their dad. Over digging snow, shovel and snow. God help us. It might seem like it's just ordinary. If they told you this kind of story, like this guy said, nah. That's what he said. But he did. He did. Glory to God. Glory to God. So walking and living in the spirit. If we are not led, how do we walk in freedom? How? So the Spirit of the Lord is supposed to help us out of these things. Because you listen to him on you. Like I said, I could be talking, enter the office, you come out, somebody different. Because you are in constant communion with the Holy Spirit. Pride might make sometimes, oh God help us. It's like, let me give you that today. Pride might make us feel like, well, 
Then along the line, when you have done it, you're justifying every means. <laughs> justifying. You're trying to, as if you're trying to convince God that the Bible is wrong. You are correct. <laughs> you justify. No, right there, just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me out. Quickly. Once you can, the faster you do it, you don't know how beautiful it is. It doesn't matter. I, in my, you think you're, sometimes, when you want to do the right, you might, the flesh will tell you that's not the way to do because you want, you have to show yourself strong. I'm talking about the living of those. I'm talking about the very practical things now. I'm not just telling you, God needs to leave you. God, yeah, I will know. But how? When you do something, or you are, if I have an argument with you, no, I'll jump on you. <laughs> if I have, if you have, there's an argument. Now, I'm your pastor. Even if you did something wrong, I got upset. And I did something. And I walk away. I could say, well, she has to know. She has to understand. You know what I'm trying to say? Now, this could be your office, your job, your colleague, your subordinate, anybody. Somebody hear me? Or your superior. It could be times when you're wrong. The Bible actually says, if they buffet you for doing right, for doing wrong. So no big deal. The issue is when you are buffeted for not doing wrong, when you do right. That's where the thing comes. That's when flesh comes. But I mean, everything, you know, that's when you want to like five hours. Everybody should know this and this. Then, that's when the discipline of saying, Lord, this is how it happened. Help me. So you, for example, for a superior, I'm trying to tell you now, I'm putting myself. So for the superior, I should cover it up by saying, well, I'm pastor. I mean, when I come out, you're not going to say, say pastor, sorry, or whatever. You, you know, you're pastor. <laughs> that's okay. But I could, I, for, for, for the ability to go in there and recognize that even if you are the superior, that I can still be wrong. Somebody hear me? That's maturity and security in God. My promotion truly doesn't come from man. It comes from God. I told you guys I've been in a meeting where somebody invited me, a youth pastor of the church invited me to a, a seminar they had. <clears throat> And all the pastors were sitting in front. We were invited ministers. And at the end of the service, the guy was inviting, was introducing the pastors. Now, before then, you know, we came in here before then, they had, um, we were doing seminars, there was some question about, oh, they did and we didn't bother him, but we just said, well, go to places and invite people generally. We, didn't, we, we did not send invitation cards. I didn't believe in that to churches who were evangelizing the unsaved. Or probably people outside, they could be saved. Maybe they're not walking as they should walk, or they needed a place for strength. That was what we're doing. There was no time we sent flyers that people sent flyers to church. We did not ever. But even then, people were coming and things were happening. And some people were, they were like, yeah, they think they do seminars. Then they were not doing seminars. But eventually, they started doing seminars more than everybody else. And they were sending flyers to churches, even brought flyers here. You see the irony of life? But that's okay. I don't. And um, we sat there. I'm just telling you this for things to let you know. So at the end of the thing, the man was introducing the minister. This is not, this is, <laughs> introduced everybody. He got to me, skipped me. The next one. And these people were telling him, because most of them knew they've been attending the seminars at another place, and I didn't, I didn't even know them. And some of them were like, even at the end, when he didn't introduce me, a quarter or half of the church, when I was leaving, came to me, hey, pastor. <laughs> Light cannot be hidden. Just wave your hand unto the Lord to God be the glory. And so, but it was funny. Skip me. So, so when I go, I say, Ah, Father, thank you. As I was driving, I said, Thank you. You have shown me a one way not to do things. Are you getting it? It's one thing to be critical, but making understand that you can't be critical and do the same thing you criticize. So let whatever you think is not right help you know not to do the same way. Somebody hear me? Because you will feel the pain because you are on the receiving end. If somebody else is on the receiving end, you might not know unless God makes you know. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell somebody, you are to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, it's so important for victory. We talked about without knowledge, destruction. With knowledge, victory. Now, that's why Jesus said in John 16, 7, it is expedient. It is 
expedient, which means it is advantageous for you that I go away. For if I don't go, the comforter will not come. He was in one place at the same time. But the Holy Spirit will come and be in everywhere. The omnipresence of God being everywhere at the same time. Come into play with the Holy Spirit. Expedient in the original language talks useful, advantage, profit. Be here together to contribute to be able to do it with Him. He will hear Him, bring it to us. It will be suitable, answer the purpose. The dictionary actually says expedient, providing an easy and quick way to solve a problem or do something. So it is easier for the Holy Spirit to come and do it. That is the experience. To walk this walk of faith, the Holy Spirit has to be here. You know the simple communication of Holy Spirit help me? Sometimes we lose sight of that because I'm talking about with time we're not going to that. Maybe we'll continue next. But do you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Do you talk to Him like a person? I'm not talking only when you want to pray from 30 minutes one hour prayer. I mean, per second, per second. You're going to the store. Holy Spirit, help me with this price. Holy Spirit, I wake up this morning. I, Holy Spirit, this is a wonderful day. Holy Spirit, I want to you know, communicate with you like you know He's there. Do you? John 14, 26 says, and when he, they say the comforter, we send a comforter, paraclete, one called alongside to give us aid. He's supposed to help us. So why are we not involving him to help us? Can God make mistakes? He said he's called to help us, comforter. So why are we not involving him? You don't need help? <laughs> I need help. That's why I involve him all the time. All powerful Holy Spirit available for me to talk to, and I won't. When I am ministering to you, I'm communicating with Him. I have ministers to people on the phone, like the prayer line. They have ministry. I don't see them face to face. It's not the reactions, and we have wonderful testimonies and responses. So I don't have to see them, but the Holy Spirit sees them. So I communicate with the Holy Spirit, and I talk with them as such. So, so. In your business dealings, on the job, when things seem to be rough, in me, right there, you're talking with him. First of all, the fact that you talk with him gives you peace because that's what Philippians 4 6 says. When you are involving, you are involving God. So you know things are working out. There's no way they can defeat him. There's no way they can defeat you and him. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you are there dealing with him. There's no power of hell. You know, the, uh, the presence of God is there. No matter what is coming at you now, if there's a garden of witchcraft, it's cut out of peace. If there are any evil arrows coming at you, it's dislodged. Even if it has come in, it has to come out. By the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Tell somebody, the Holy Spirit is there for you. In Romans 8.14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons. Now, it said they are. They. We are. <laughs> and every word is important to me. They are. It's not just a general thing. They is consciously involving me. I am the Son of God. You know, when I did my water baptism years back when I got saved, few weeks as a Christian, as I got into the water, and I came out. This is not some, I mean, it was, it was like maybe I had spoken, checked the Bible a million times or whatever. So, uh, speaking like, I, I really speak what, is, what I maybe has been taught or whatever. And the Lord just, as I came out of the water, two things I told you guys. He said, this is one of my beloved sons. He framed it like this. It's not like something I'll frame. If he didn't say, this is my beloved, that's what he told Jesus. But I am one of, because Jesus is the first begotten. Now later I started going through scripture, breaking it down. This is the first, so this is one of my beloved sons in whom I am well pleased. 
So I know I'm a child of God. There's so many things about that. No, you can please. I don't care what you bring. <laughs> it doesn't change. Yes, I say some of things happen around me, so I feel like the gospel is old. It's the past. Let's start something else. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's not an old book. It's the same. People have tried to destroy the Bible. It's the same. Nothing, nothing. No place. They sank a shipload of Bible in some places, in the water, in the sea. Please. The gospel grew faster after that. <laughs> it became an, a planted seed in the water. There. <laughs> and the harvest came out. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can't stop God. You can't. You can't stop God. <laughs> Glory to God. You can stop God. That's number one. He told me. Second, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Look for it in. I didn't think I was going to preach. Left to me, I would do business, take briefcase, travel, do other things, do the course from day one of salvation, do visitation, evangelism, all those things, expecting signs and wonders, and we'll see signs and wonders. So we're actually doing that. So I feel that's why I'm going to continue, not like doing pastoring or anything. Praise God. No, I don't love you, though. I don't love you. So, <laughs> you know, praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. But, 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 but I, that scripture came. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Then it broke down later. So, most cases, gives me the encounter. Then it gives me scripture to, to explain it. Praise God. As I was at my water baptism, I have two different encounters that came at different times. So, I know I'm a son, one of the sons of God. So, every believer who is a child of God can be described thus. So this is from a relationship. A son of God is not just a flippant thing. A relationship. We cannot be, there's no child you divorce from the father or mother. <laughs> it's impossible. It's permanent. So it's permanent. it's permanent. Me and God. I'm God's child. God's hair. Abraham's seed. And John hair with Christ Jesus. He's the first begotten. I'm one of the begotten. Hallelujah. Don't take that for granted. Cherish it. Glory to God. Somebody cherish it. You are a child of God. You are not ordinary. No matter what's happening around you, don't, don't belittle your relationship with God. <laughs> he said, if he spared not his only son that brought you into that relationship, how shall he, in Romans chapter 8, will he not freely with him give you all things? Every believer is led by the Spirit of God. We should be led. We know how to. We know His voice. He said, My sheep know my voice. John 10, verses 4 and 5. His sheep, His own. We are His children. We know His voice. John 18, 30 says, Everyone that is of truth heareth my voice. Because when you're not of truth, you can't hear. We hear a whole lot of other things. That's what I'm talking about knowledge still. And when we hear his voice, we will not be led astray. He's the good shepherd. Not the one that comes to take, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he has come to bring life and bring it more abundantly. So in everything he leads you, he can never lead you astray. I mentioned it on Wednesday. Never. Come on. Never. You might not understand it. You might not understand, be able to explain or comprehend all that is happening. That's why he's God. And you are not. <laughs> so you depend on him. So he will show things as if necessary. But relax. He could have been showing now because of the way you've been feeling. You might not be hearing. Not because he's not telling. Just rest in him. Tell somebody to rest. Stop fighting. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. He that began the good work in you. He will definitely unfailingly, unchangingly complete it. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So the leading does not come because of a title or calling or ordination or years of salvation and experience. Everything, the leading has to be like, no, no, no. The moment you get born again, the access has been created. I told you my experiences as a young believer. Yeah. I go to sit down for cancer, share with me about the Holy Spirit, so come on Monday to receive, went home, had my own encounter right in my home, 
blasted in tongues somehow. <laughs> came on Monday, are you ready? Oh my God, it already came. The point is the seed of the word has been so called faith comes by what? By hearing and hearing of the word. And I started blasting in tongues. I said, yeah, hallelujah, glory to God. But so I'm telling you, these encounters are real. I said, young convert one week. So it's not like maybe it has to be for, for years. And God started leading and speaking that way. That's what I'm telling you. Glory to God. But it grows with fellowship. And you shall know him, know him, know him. It grows with fellowship. I can know you for one day, but I will know you more after a while, isn't it? I will know the things you like, the things you don't like, or at least we are supposed to, <laughs> if the relationship is real. Because if it's not real, I can know you based on what I think you should be. You know there are relationships like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when I'm talking about you, I'm talking about how I think you should react. You know, I, I'm not patient to want to know how you really are. Because that comes from individual impatience. Because every relationship is based on patience. You wait. So that's why you listen and you walk with the person. You wait for them to know. And this is built on trust. Praise God. Trust comes from knowledge. Why do we trust God? Because of who he is. He said, Abraham believed God. Why? Because he's the one that quickened the dead and called those things that have been as though what? They were. So he believed God because of who God is. Glory to God. So we see David was already fellowshipping with the Lord even before being ordained to be king in, in 1 Samuel 16. Open unto it. Now you should know where 1 Samuel is before 2 Samuel. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> that helps, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> See, and Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. After he had brought in the, the older, the handsome, and the... First, first Samuel 16, verse 11. You notice the ones that the Lord did not take. He said the Lord like, like rejected them. Praise God. You know what I mean? Uh, I can imagine how the brother was being. When he, you know when he went to the war front? Who was talking down on him? Uh, they're not in the deal. They don't have an understanding. No, they didn't. So in verse 11, and Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, there remaineth here the youngest. And behold, he kept the sheep. I'm trying to let you know that this is the he was keeping the sheep before the ordination, before the anointing. He was anointed in verse 13 when they called him from where he was keeping the sheep. Now remember that in 1 Samuel verse 17 when David verse 17 verse 30, chapter 17 I mean 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 37 when David was before Saul say I'm trying to let you bring into an understanding. David said, the Lord who delivered me from the lion and the bear, he will take care of this Goliath still. That was before he was anointed or ordained. Someone would say, well, someone would say, well, uh, it's because David was hearing God because he was an anointed king. Well before the anointing, he said the Lord who delivered me. How did the Lord deliver him? He was dealing with the Lord. While he was keeping sheep. Hello? That's why he could tell his wife, who said, Why are you dancing naked? Ha, the Lord who picked me from where I was keeping sheep. When I was a nobody, why won't I dance naked before him? Are you, I'm paraphrasing. You understand what I'm trying to say? So he knew he, had, he has always had an encounter with the Lord. So it's not the title or the number of years as a Christian. From the moment you are a child of God, you are led by the Spirit of the living God. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. But in this fellowship, 
There is faith. Because that's why David said, the Lord has been keeping me. Who delivered me from? Who will take care of this? That's faith in that God. Do you see that? In this fellowship, we see the people in Hebrews 11, 33, 32 to 34, talking about judge all these people, David, Samson, and all these men and that God used, you know, in that time. They were people of faith who had fellowship with God. They communicated with God. Now somebody says, but these are special people, individuals. They were special in that time because one of them was chosen to lead or do something. But today we are all like those individuals were. We all have individual identities as children of God and people of God who God has chosen to put his spirit in and upon. So we can function and even more like those people of old. From Abraham to Moses, David, Jehoshaphat, Elijah, Elijah, that's how it says in James, Elijah was a man of like passion like us. So that's why if he prayed, we can pray too, so he likened us to him. He didn't say he was different from you more than you know. He did. We all can do now like Elijah did. Everyone in his time could not do like he did. We're in a different dispensation. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So in this fellowship is faith. That's trust. And we know in Hebrews 11 says, faith pleases the Lord. And that faith that pleases the Lord, he positions us, he positions David for his choice. David was there because at that little stage, at that small stage, he was pleasing God everywhere. You see that? <laughs> he would rely on him. Come on. Help me, Lord. Yeah, the Lord giving wisdom. Deal with the lion and the bear. He was depending on God, not afraid, knowing that God can help him. David says, you uncircumcised Philistine. Small boy. <laughs> what did he know? When they entered the temple, probably didn't utter a word. And you, how did he know the covenant? Hello? He was the youngest. How did he have an understanding? He had knowledge. Communicating with God. He knew the covenant. Based on that, he was doing his daily activities. I'm a child of God. I'm in covenant with God. I'm circumcised. There's no lion or bear that can take me or take what belongs to me. You cannot steal from me. The devourer is to be for my sake. Children are the heritage of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord. He make a tree and no sorrow is added. What God has joined together, no devil can put asunder by the stripes of Jesus. I have been healed. Sickness, you cannot hold me down. I will live well and not die. Somebody shout, Hallelujah! He knew. Not just because he isolated, took one isolated scripture to quote. Based on his fellowship with God, he understood covenant. He lived in this covenant. He lived in this fellowship and relationship. Every day, he's led by the Spirit of God. He's in communion with the Spirit of God. He knows it. He hungers for it. Because he now knows God. Who can tell him anything? That Caleb said, if God delights in us, ah, this is all a bread like bread horse. He knew his God. Glory to God. Just wave your hand unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So faith knows and remembers it is God's grace. If it is God, it is his grace. Because faith is in God. That's the beautiful thing. Faith receives what God has done, not what we are working on for ourselves. That helps us when the times of pressure comes. Pressure can come from issues. Pressures can also come from blessing. Hey, you believe God for a job? Pray, pray. <laughs> you forget where you were before it happened. Somebody hear me? Because it happened to you, it might sound spiritual. But in your heart, you're looking at the person like you're not doing enough. Uh, that's not the grace of God. Praise God. We challenge you, we are challenging you to know that wherever you are, it's too small compared to where God is taking you. And you will make it. God with you, there's nothing that can stop. It's a dynamic door. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. So faith is in what God has done. So there is no point in time where you take any glory or you are concerned about what has been done or what can be taken away. No devil can take what belongs to you. God says there is no repentance in his gifts and his calling. That, do you know, why will God say every good and every perfect gift? James chapter 1, verse 17, 18. Every good and every perfect gift come from where? You know, I just stopped there. Why does he include that there is no shadow of turning in him? The good journey that God started, why don't you remember the three times? We forget too quickly. It's so easy. Sometimes I've seen people who in every of shout, discrimination, discrimination. I mean the story was telling me of a oh God help me. We had a, a, a couple. So the I think it was the lady was there or the guy was there. Oh, the, the lady was there. And he was not here for a while. And then, mm-hmm. then, then he came in. But notice now every good and every private gift, there's no shadow of turning. Hmm? So, by the time the guy was still there, he still had his accent, because he had not come into America. So, but the lady has here seen other people with the, you know, the accent, so he made it look like he didn't, he made it look like the other one. Now, that's because the foundation was not right. Somebody hear me? If it is an uncle or cousin that advises you to get married, <laughs> changes can come. See, that's what I'm saying. There's no shadow of turning. It's God who began it completely. So, by the time they reunite, the, the, and let's say the bubble, <laughs> the guy's accent was too strong because he just came in. So, he was comparing the, uh, he was comparing his accent to the people who were out there. So, they even have a relationship for a long time in their home. A year or plus years, that kind of thing. Now, that's a sad story, isn't it? It's not supposed to be like that. It could be either way, whether the woman or the man. What I'm trying to say is that distance will not make any difference. Or the fact that because Now, uh, same thing. You could, you could even be in the same place. And you both agree for something. If the foundation is right, and God is the foundation, there is no comparison. So you're not going to say, well, hmm, things are rough now. Look at how that one is working hard. <laughs> uh, look at how that one cooks. No, it doesn't cook that way. <laughs> or whatever. You know, but, um, but the foundation is right. We, what God, if God says yes, there's no shadow of turning in him. There's no change. Somebody hear me? That's why it says, by faith, which is faith in who? In God. That it might be by what? Grace. Now, grace qualifies you for what you cannot do or even comprehend. So, faith reaches out to what we are not naturally qualified for, as in our salvation. Abraham seed by faith. Some of you have never been to Israel. Hmm? But you are Abraham seed. How? By faith, isn't it? Because of Jesus, we can declare ourselves to be Abraham's children. So we can tap into the blessings of Abraham. So the walkings of God. So when it's rough, this unchanging God, if he's leading us, we're not afraid of whatever the enemy is bringing. It does not change. Somebody hear me? I say it doesn't change. I say God doesn't change. He has not changed. He will never change. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He that began the good work will what? Let me hear it again. I hear this He that began the good work will what? Again. Again. Now, you know the complete can be a process. When they begin to tar this road, they start from the beginning. They say they will complete it next week. Do they just stand in one place? They are working. They are working. They are working. They are working. Every day. 
they sometimes they scoop away. Sometimes you wonder. I thought they said they would complete it. They just scrap the whole thing. You know, they, they, sometimes like they remove the whole surface again. Or when they, you thought they were almost completing. How many times have you gone outside and been to ask the workers? You said you completed next week. Why are you removing it off? <laughs> you just let them be. You just believe that they will complete what? Next week. God says, He that began the good work will complete it. There is a process in some cases. In some cases, it's instantaneous. In some cases, one day, two days, three days, three months. But there is no process that the enemy can take control of unless you allow him. Which means in the midst of the process, in the middle of your true process, you can enjoy peace knowing God is working. You know, the peace is the victory. It's not just the actual the, the day you just get the breakthrough. It's the ability to be enjoying life while things are happening. That's when you are. I told you the story of Pagosi and then the Brother Frank when they went to do some job with some people. For some, This man had all the money. He had all the money. Every money was... He had cars, fleet of cars. When the recession started, 2009, that recession. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said the man was crying. They come in... <laughs> They, didn't even, they were like, what? This one should be celebrated. He was crying that recession was coming. He has not even been hit yet. He was anticipating the negative. And he was crying. Meanwhile, they who came that way, he was going, they, he was paying for the job they were doing. Had nothing compared to all he had. And they were enjoying life. <laughs> who was really living? They were living. He wasn't living. No matter what he had. The key the joy of the Lord is our strength. Knowing God is walking. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He loves us. He loves us. I'm telling you today, if I, all I said on Wednesday, the Lord told me to tell, remind this my children every day that I love them. You must be the reason why he told me to be saying that in every service. I say it all the time, but I say, re-emphasize it. God loves you. I say, God loves you. I say, God loves you. Man could have said otherwise. Man could have shown otherwise. Your colleagues on the job, your people around your neighborhood, your family, or people you, you know, everyone around you might give anything else, any other impression. But I'm here to tell you today, confidently, that God loves you. Rise on your feet. I have so much to bring, but I don't want us to take too much. Just wave unto the Lord. There are some declarations I'll declare today. He came, I had to write some stuff things down. <laughs> and make it some people go and mock up. Feel the presence of God over me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, say, say what eyes have not seen. Not just it. Things that have never happened before. Unprecedented. Ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. <laughs> Things he has prepared for you and I. He reveals them by his spirit. He will show us, teach us, remind us of it, and show us things to come. I have told you things about this leading. So now we come to service. We expect how many of you come to service really expecting to hear God? Yeah. Don't come like let me just go and I go. No, no, no. Come here really. I we've all have shared testimonies of our lives in different issues. I have shared different testimonies of we're going to minister and the Lord brings some a simple statement. It sounds simple. But you listen to God. I've told you different stories where I went to minister and they were fighting all over the place about something in the crowd could not settle. And the Lord settles it eventually. On the altar, I said, wait until the ministration in the evening. That's hearing him. It's not because I was in, it's like I'm a minister. Then I'll hear him. Everyone like that. The same way he will lead me. Like that's like my job. The same way he will lead you on your job. <laughs> in your business, everywhere, something comes up, and you're to, your boss says something, and it, I tell you, stay it, don't move, don't say a word. A flesh wants to make you, and the Lord says, shh. <laughs> and, when the, and when you you are quiet, you realize that eventually it was wisdom for you not to have uttered a word. So it's listening to the Holy Ghost, not by, you know me, I'm a Christian. You know, sometimes we act that way. If you act from a fanatic point, 
you might be displaying Christianity, but you might bring it in an offensive way. Our Christianity doesn't smell, it's a sweet smelling savor. Somebody hear me? Glory to God. But at times, so you want me to say, forgive. Now, that sounds very ordinary, isn't it? Not ordinary, very powerful. Because God talks about forgiveness and miracles. That's why some people leave, you live the same way. There's no way you can't disobey God consistently and you say you're walking with God. So, some things are getting up, so I don't know. So, God can, I mean, anything that's called normal, there are certain things that are normal. <laughs> then you can see clearly. I can't love you and dislove you or love you, whatever, whether I dislove or love. <laughs> I love that one, not love that one. I love you, know that. I can't do that. And the Lord said, forgive. And some of them have taken such steps. I've given different stories and testimonies. But the moment they made their adjustment, the fruit of the word first thing, the Lord reminds me now. He said, what declaration towards that? I'll mention for those that are viewing online so they can hear, because if I make it private, if I can last name, they're not there. But that's why that's why I'm under that influence of the Holy Spirit. The Lord told me. He said, now nah, he's been having breakthroughs. We have testimonies coming forth about fruit of the womb. We have more coming some. We're not even in a place to share now. You know, different things that God brings us. Prophetic instruction and things that to God be the glory. Just wave your hand until he takes all the glory. You know. And uh, now he told me, he said two things. He said, and many others. He said this an anointing service that's coming on next Sunday. The prayer fast the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Next Sunday, he said that not, not most. If you are, you can't be in a church and not be part of the program of the church. <laughs> you can't. It's, it's mixed. It's not. Somebody hear what I'm trying to say? You have to be. I remember the story of the guy who told somebody, "That's my church." That's, he was telling somebody, "Wait, wait, that's my church," and he had never been. He just knows about the church. <laughs> when the person who told me, so I said, "We." has never been here, you know, so it's not things like that. Like I always joke, I said, don't tell somebody it's my church and then you come with it the next time the church is moved. <laughs> you know, um, 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 they used to be here. <laughs> so, many, praise God. <laughs> so, but it says for this program coming, two things. Lupus. Some of you know this medical condition. They say, if you know anyone, who has been diagnosed or is afraid because it's in your family line to believe God. Alright? I come so suddenly as it says, like I've told you guys about that issue of high blood and all that. Lupus, the, the next one is fruit of the womb. This Sunday we're coming in now. Glory to God. So we deal with the blood, we deal with, we deal with all that. He's the miracle worker. Now it says, and a whole lot of other things that can be there, but this to be emphasized on that. So anybody, you know, somebody with their MS, just loving you and all that, just let them connect online. And those who can come in here, God is about to do something. Praise God. This coming week. Wave your hand and say, We give you praise, mighty God. We bless your name, mighty God. Hallelujah. Just to be able to bless God. It's a privilege that we can be here. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. He gets all the glory. Glory to God. That's why sometimes we people come into the service. We've had it, it's not even a Sunday, Wednesday. Nobody's aware. They sit down before the service starts. Migraine disappears. A lady was coming to all the say for two years. Remember her testimony? She was having all the things in her the mammogram. They did everything was clear for breast cancer. For she came attended for three weeks. She did. She mentioned everything about her children, her going back to school, her mother. And her own job, but she didn't actually brought her daughter in the job. God brought breakthrough in the job, which she called it Bifu. Bifu. Her children went back to college. I tell you guys the testimony. But that one she did the mother. She said, I sat down and said, Trust God. For three weeks, she went back. All the things they found for two years disappeared. 
So it's not any man doing it. It's God. Hallelujah. Wave your hand. Praise you, my God. You get all the attention. You get all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if there's any block in any form, when we talk about this, it's a desire to want the leading of the Lord. Sometimes cultural background religion or tradition. Sometimes you have too many people around you, so sometimes you don't even listen to God first. You just like, oh, well, well, well. <laughs> you have a, a lot of opinions from the whole world. Now, if you, if social media is bringing all that way, you just just don't think of the Bible first. I don't want to ask you when last did you read your Bible. That's how we do the Bible reading for us. We listen to at least you get to read. Read and listen to. Jesus said so you can have to get it from like I'm when you have you just listen so you can get faster. You know, sometimes I'm listening and listening because it's faster. You can listen over and over and over and over. Then we we'll then sit down and when you are reading, you can come in things are coming. And while you're reading, something comes up, dwell on it, expand on it, get translation. One word in a verse can change your whole destiny. An understanding of one word. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. If it is my God, hey, this God is mine. If that explodes in your mind for a whole day, you'll be surprised. You might be walking like, my God. <laughs> Anything they tell you, like, no. <laughs> that boldness and authority can make you get things done in that day. Hallelujah. Just wave your hand unto the Lord. Lift your eyes to heaven. So we've been talking about being led by the Spirit of God. In that same atmosphere and attitude of this, those of us being by online too, just listen, listen by the Spirit now. Just where you are there sitting in your home or just be conscious. Receive all that I'm going to declare now. Those of you that are here, you can lift up your hand and receive it or place your right hand on your forehead however you are going to receive it. Just receive it as I'm declaring. Is somebody hear me? Glory to God. Be conscious. When you lift up your hand, you know the advantage? You're surrendering to God. Secondly, you become more conscious of what you're doing. Whether it's place your hand on your forehead or you you're doing something. Because you could just be there and I'm saying it, your mind can just be in every other thing. Like we said, that's what the enemy wants. But we want what God wants to do. Praise God. Glory to God. Either you lift your hand or you place your hand on your forehead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare right now over you, in the name of Jesus, you will not miss your miracles. Because it comes by timing. You will not miss your divine appointments. You will not miss your divine assignments or positioning. Your contact, your networking in the name of Jesus. You will be at the right place at the right time. You'll be at the right place at the right time. You will say the right thing at the right time. You'll meet the right people at the right time, at the right place, and for the right purpose. Your Egyptian on your way to recovery will be located. Like in David, when they were to recover, the Lord said, you shall recover all. They found that Egyptian who led them to where the Philistines were. So whoever instrument God is going to use to lead you to your breakthrough will be located. You will not miss them. I say you will not miss them. You will not miss them. In the name of Jesus, you will find your Rahab as a spy. The spies went into that land and they found Rahab. So if they didn't find Rahab, they will find a way of escape. And also you as Rahab, you will contact your spies that God will use as your positioning to get you out of destruction when the, when the attack comes in the name of Jesus. The kings or decision makers in your case we remember you for favor. As in the case of the king and Mordecai, they will toss back and forth. They will not forget you. They will remember you in the name of Jesus. Those you have helped will not forget you. This is very important. Those you have helped will not forget you. I said those you have helped will not forget you. 
um, diligence as unto the Lord, the Lord will reward you. But those who are helped, they will not walk against you. They will not speak against you. They will not. Walk, they will walk for you. They will remember you for good. In, as in the case of Joseph and the butler, they will remember you for good in the name of Jesus. Psalm 120 verse 1 and 2. He said, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. He will eat the labor of his hand. Happy shall he be, and he shall be well with him. Your Goliaths, everybody hear this. Your Goliaths have been positioned to be stepping stones to your promotion. <laughs> so like David and Goliath, when he destroyed Goliath, when he chopped down his head, David said he had deserted the song the song. He destroyed 10,000 and sold 1,000, but David 10,000. So your Goliaths, everything that was intended to be a block of mountains in your life, have been positioned now to be stepping stones to your next level of promotion. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, begin to bless the Lord right now. We praise you, mighty God. 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 This is real. This is also receiving, receiving, receiving. It's so real and so, so vibrant. I had to write it with green. <laughs> Glory to God. So the issues now become stepping stones. Something greater is in store. 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 I say it's in store. Something greater is in store. Receive it, receive it. Do not be afraid. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid. Receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it. Glory to God. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah.